Okay. Um, okay, we have some other ladies coming in. All right, so we're going to get started. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Lisa Washington, or Lisa Washington, but um, most of you know me as Lisa. Some of you know me as Beauty Boss Lisa. And um, I own a coaching um, business called Boss Up Services, LLC. You can go look it up. It's out there. It's legit. And I teach people how to build a profitable businesses online and offline too. But um, in the last year and a half, um, um, it's been mostly online. Hi, Herlinda. All right. So um, we tonight, what we want to do is um, I'm asking the question, what do you want to learn? What do you think you need to know? What would you like to get from this group? So before I started the recording, Linda was uh, was um, was sharing. And Linda, could you say that again, please? I would like to learn how to sell socially like you and Cherie do, because you're both very successful at it. I see Hurley clapping. <laughs> Yes, we all would like to know those secrets. Um, I mean, I post uh, not as consistently as I should, I admit that. But um, I also don't get a lot of like, hey, I'd like to try this or, you know, I just don't get a lot of positive responses um, from people from it. Um, and so I, I need to have a better idea of what I need to be doing. Okay. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right. Um, what about you, Miss Hurley? Any anything else? If you can I I'm think that's I think that's pretty much where I am. Um I'm just terrified of going long in front of the camera. I don't know why. I mean, you know, I'm in organizations, I hold meetings, I teach classes in person. I don't know what the deal is with the camera. Um, and I have a lot of fun doing the in-person parties, but I really want to get more on um, social media. Um, and I just would like to try it. I just don't know how to step out there. It makes me nervous, I guess. I don't know where to start. You don't know where to start, okay. All right, thank you. So you want to know where you start. How do you get started? All right. Miss Anon, Anonymous. <laughs> what would you like to learn? What would you like to know? I know you can hear me. Uh -uh. I don't think she's on right now. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay. Ah, post, posted it in the um, chat. Um, oh, just now, just today, tonight, she has phone. <laughs> okay. Right. Mine is more networking. I have no problem being on camera. Okay. All right, so are you saying that you're networking tonight? Are you saying that you want to know how to network better? Please clarify. Thank you. And uh, while we waiting on that answer is um, you wanna to network tonight or do you wanna know how to network better for your business? Please, please let us know that in the chat. Um, in the meantime, do either um, you, one of you, Linda or her Linda, do either one of you um, have a second um, request for what you would like to learn? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, network better for her business. Okay. All right, anyone else with um, any additional questions, so the, thoughts, or comments? For the recording, her statement is network better. I'm not good at telling people what I do clearly. Right, thank you, Sharon, thank you. Thank you for um, making that clear. All right, so um, 
I assume that that's it. Linda, anything else you want to add? Well, I, I know one of the things that I go through, and I've heard other people say the same thing, is um, where you get all of the posts to be able to post every day. Um, you know, you're only supposed to you're only supposed to post business 20% and personal 80%. And so you're scrolling, 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 looking for stuff to post. And the next thing you know, a couple hours has gone by and maybe you found one or two that you feel like, oh, that's worth it. Um, it's, it's very time consuming. And, um, and I don't want it to be that time consuming anymore. I, I need to find an, a quick, easy way to do it so that I'm not spending a whole bunch of time trying to find things to post. Okay, how to create content. There you go. Very you said it looks more professionally than I did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let me ask you real quick though, Linda. So what you're saying is you're scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. So you're looking online to find something to post is what you're doing. So you're like sharing, um, so to speak. Right, sometimes I'm looking on Facebook. Sometimes I'm looking on Instagram. Sometimes I'm, I've Googled, uh, you know, positive quotes or business quotes or, um, you know, I mean, I've, I've gone several different avenues and it's very time consuming. It's like, I'm going, oh my gosh, I need to be talking to people. And here I am spending all this time trying to find things to post on Facebook. Am I talking to people or am I posting on Facebook? What am I doing? Okay, so you are looking for content that's already created instead of creating your own unique content. Is that what you're saying? Well, yeah, because I'm just learning how to create content and it takes me a long time. Okay. <laughs> so I try to find content that's already created. So, you know, either way, it's taken me a long time. All right. All right. So, um, so you're looking for content and not necessarily ideas, or you look for content and ideas? Probably both, because I find myself going, okay, I just put something like that on there. I gotta find something new. What am I gonna do new? You know, oh, it's, okay. yeah. All right, all right, all right. I think I have an idea of what it is that you are, um, that you are looking for. All right, so, um, this is a good place to start um, how to sell, um, how to get over your nervousness and just get started, like where to start, um, how to network better um, so that you can um, clearly share with others what it is that you do, what you're looking for, what you're offering, and so forth. And then, of course, um, some simple ways to create unique content and to find ideas. Got it? Got it. Okay, we're not gonna talk about all that tonight. I just needed to know um, what, what kind of um, content to bring to you guys in the future. Um, tonight, what was I gonna talk about tonight, Sharon? Since I was so um, thinking so, I had all night and all day tomorrow to, um, to um, to 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 come up with it. <laughs> idea I uploaded earlier today, or no, not the one about how to keep it. Well, that's a good one. Why don't we just cover um, that too? Um, the one you mentioned earlier was um, how to keep your your account safe from hackers. Yes. Okay, so a lot of people are getting hacked. Um, there is, um, let's see. Well, the first thing um, how this conversation came about was I told Sharon that I had a 20 character Facebook password. How many characters is your Facebook password? Count it, count it out and see. Mine's 13. Um, you're eight and okay, eight to 12 is generally it. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, eight to 12 is generally, actually some people's um, was like four and six and then some sites start, started requiring a minimum of eight. Um, however, the more characters you have, the more security is. I actually went from eight to 12 and still got hacked and went from 12 to 16 
And when it was time to change it again, I just put it in my date book, change Facebook password. And now it's up to 20. I oh, will wow. tell you that face, I, I got hacked three times. And so <laughs> I learned, the first thing I learned was that hackers really love me for some reason. The next thing I learned was that um, the more characters in your um, password, the more secure it is. And that the, 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 the more you're out there online, the more visible you get, the more um, popular you get, the more they want to get to you. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, so they're, they're going to want to get to you. And so um, you have to stay, be smart to try to stay one step ahead of them. And one of those is to change your password on a regular basis. So I do change mine regularly um, to make sure that it's not a name or a word or a sentence that they can guess or create. And it's not tied to any of the questions that you use on your other accounts. Um, for instance, you know, somebody, and, and they, the people, the hackers out there have gotten really smart. They'll come out and ask questions like, um, you know, what was your first car? And then we get out there and talk about it, but those are also the same questions that they ask uh, as security questions on our bank account, on our credit card accounts, when, all of those accounts. So when you see all of those questions out there where people saying they want to get to know you, sometimes they're not trying to get to know you. They're trying to get to know your information so that they can hack you. And it might even be coming from an innocent person who don't know, but the people watching you will be paying attention. So, um, and, and I'm going to tell you right now, some, some um, um, I see in the chat, um, I do not answer those things ever. I'm assuming you mean you don't answer them on social media. That's good because we have to answer them in our secured accounts. Having that as a backup is no longer an option on most bank accounts, most credit card accounts, and anything that with a, a more than a basic level of security is going to ask those questions. So we have to answer them there, which means we should never answer them out in social media. Okay. <laughs> and if you have in the past, I don't care how far it's back. If you have answered those questions in the past, go and change those questions in your, um, your secured accounts because hackers go all the way back through to your beginning. I'm telling you, I can't not figure out why these old posts of mine just keep coming up, coming up, coming up, coming up again because people are crawling all the way back through your my timeline and my feed looking at what I posted two, three, four years ago, five years ago. So if you've answered any of those questions, go back and change them. But better still, just set a time when you change all your passwords. <laughs> and I know we want to use the same password for a lot of accounts just for ease. But that's one of the most dangerous things we can do. Okay? So that helps. There is also something that um, Facebook sent to me. I'm going to see. I'm going to see if I can pull it up. And if I can then I'm gonna show it to you. Okay, so yeah, here, I'm gonna share my screen. Okay. All right, so I'm going over here to the far right. There's a little drop down arrow. I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to go into settings and privacy. Can y'all see that? Okay. And then I'm going to settings and then security and login. All right, so I'm gonna show you this here, where you're logged in. How many know about this? Anybody know about this here? I'm gonna click this right here. It says that I'm on my PC right now. I also have an iPhone and it lists the city. This says device unknown in Stockbridge, Georgia. That was me too, it was my tablet. But, and it goes all the way down to, you know, iPhone 7 and Windows PC. This only goes down to 2020. But um, uh, at one, I think it goes back about a year. But at one time when I was um, hacked, this is what Facebook, uh, taught me to come in here and look at. 
It says that I had logged in from, I don't know, Oklahoma. It said that I had logged in from uh, Timbuktu. It had it listed all the way there. So if you suspect yourself of being hacked, you can come in here and look at that. And if you see yourself logged in somewhere where you know you haven't been and you've not logged in and haven't been, you know that you have been hacked and you need to um, change your password immediately, okay? All right, so. Let me throw something out there on that as well. If you've changed your phone number, you need to go in here and, and delete that one because this will stay there and whoever gets your next phone, they're not a, they're a unscrupulous person. They have your stuff. That's, that's, that's true. Thank you, Sharon. Yeah. So um, go in and do a checkup from time to time. As I said, if you're planning to build a business on social media, um, security is going to be one of the top things that you want to um, put into place because you don't want to build it for somebody to come and take it. And the more your face is out there, the more you are attracted to hackers. Okay. All right. So that was the one thing. Now I'm going to go into, um, I believe, um, the the, the 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 original topic that I was going to talk about was um, Facebook. How Facebook algorithm work? Is, does that sound familiar, um, Sharon? Yeah, that's good. Okay. That. okay, thank you. All right. So, in order to build a business on um, on Facebook, you have to understand how the algorithm works. So most people know that the algorithm is there. We even use it in a sentence. <laughs> that big word that nobody even knew about like what, two years ago? Now everybody knows it's there, but they not everybody knows exactly what it is, what it does, how, how, it, how it affects you and your business and how to, um, to use it to your advantage to build business. That's one of the one of the, um, the, the, the keys to the successes that we have had is that we really understand the algorithm. We know what it's doing and we, we know how to, how to train it, so to speak, to do what we want it to do. So um, I'm gonna give you a definition of algorithm in a minute, but first of all, I want you to understand that you have to, we have to stop thinking about algorithm as this abstract thing out there. It's almost, you have to almost look at it like it's a living, breathing entity that devour, devours, virus, I can't even say that word, that consumes information, okay? It loves information and it consumes it and it uses it, it like digests it and spits it back out in some form or another. Every little piece of information it consumes, it spits out in some action or another. So the best way that I know to show you, um, for you to understand um, the algorithm, the simplest way is to think of is whenever you hear the word, I want you to substitute some other word. So for instance, when you hear the word algorithm, I want you to substitute um, the words, um, Lord have mercy, I'm having a brain moment here. Um, I want you to substitute number of views, D I E W S. So when I say this makes your algorithm go up, you will know this make the number of views go up. If I say this makes the algorithm go down, you know that this makes the number of views go down. So I can sit here right now and give you a pretty technical um, description of what the algorithm is. It's a program, uh, you know, that does this and that, but that none of that matters. What you want to know is how does it affect you and your business, okay? How does this thing affect you and your business? And so rather than try to sit here and give you a technical answer that you can Google anyway, because somebody asked me, am I, is the information I'm giving just going to be something that you can Google out there? And I was like, well, maybe, but it won't show you how to apply it the way I will, okay? So, or, or sometimes, you know, I, I say the number of eyeballs. So if I say, I would like for you to do this because it's gonna increase the number of eyeballs on your content, okay? 
or uh, don't do that because if you do that, it's going to decrease the number of eyeballs that see your content. And that is the name of the game, getting people to see what you're putting out there because Facebook is not going to show it to anybody unless you pay for it, unless you know how to manipulate the algorithm. Then you can get them, you can get organic reach. That's what they call organic reach. Organic reach is reach you don't have to pay for. <laughs> okay, so you want to get as many people to see what you put out there as possible. And to do that, you, you have to be able to manipulate the algorithm. I don't like the word manipulate, but I don't, you know, Sharon, if you can think of another word for me, please interject. Okay. Finesse. I'm sorry, what did you say? Finesse. Finesse. You have to be able to, I love it. Finesse the algorithm. That's what we do. We just stroke it. We just finesse it. Okay. All right. So here's how, uh, how I want you to think. Let's go back to when we first got, um, um, came onto Facebook. We decided we were gonna start a Facebook account. We clicked the um, clicked the little button that says set up an account. They asked for our name, our age, our, you know, all of that good stuff. And as soon as it says your account was created, it immediately start recommending what? Recommending friends for you to connect with, okay? Now, you have just set up this account. How on earth does Facebook know who to recommend to you? How? <laughs> and if you were to scroll down, there's thousands of names. It's not just one or two. Thousands. How do they know? Well, the, the, the answer to that question is, first of all, before you even get online, um, you use your email address. You have to understand that Facebook is has a partnership with almost everybody on earth. So if you use that same email on your Amazon account, Facebook knows what you do on Amazon. And if you use that same email address on when you go shopping at Nordstrom's, you know, for them to email you your receipt or wh why do everybody want to email you your receipt in there? Because they are selling your information and sharing your information and swapping your information. So they know based on your email address. Sometimes they know based on what is in your email address. For instance, my email address my original email address was Jaffra for Lisa. So they already know Jaffra. Okay. So they will immediately start connecting me with other Jaffra people. Okay. Didn't they start immediately offering you friends with other Jaffra people? They know that. And then after they use up every bit of that information, let me show you how, tell you how, 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 how deep they go. Let's say you went and did a search on Amazon and you also did a search on Nordstrom's and you also did a search on walmart.com. What they do is they say, oh, 5,000 other people also did those exact three searches. So they have something in common. So now if you did a search for cat food, then other people did a search for cat food, you have something in common. They're going to, to recommend it. So they base their algorithm is based on every little bit of information that it can consume. Remember, it's a live almost like a living, breathing thing that consumes information and spits out action. So the first action it starts spitting out is who to recommend you to, which is going to bring me to this. You do not want to be friends with very many people in your direct sales business. You don't, okay? Facebook is going to recommend those. They are, and, and, it's, and, and it's because that suits Facebook's or Mark's agenda. It does not suit or serve your agenda at all. Because once you decide to build a business on social media, you're looking for the ideal customer. Somebody who could potentially become a customer or a hostess or a team member or what, whatever. It doesn't matter what direct sales company you're in. The people who are already in your direct sales company, are the, they're the, the worst people for you to come connect with. Now, if you are a leader and there are some people in your downline you need to connect with, that's different. But if someone is not in your downline and you don't have a very good reason why y'all need to be connected on, 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 on online, then you, they should not be a part of your friend list. It confuses the algorithm. You can't 
teach it who your ideal customer is, who your target audience is, if you're confusing it with an audience that it can never be your target audience. So one of the things you're gonna to need to do is go in and unfriend those people. So you can send them a, a nice, friendly, cute little message and tell them, you know, my Facebook page is open to the public so you can see everything I do. So we don't need to be friends for you to see everything I do. So I need to unfriend you so that I can have more space to friend different people who can't see me, okay? Who, who won't know, who don't know who I am, don't know to look for me, okay? So that's one of the things you're gonna have to do. I'm gonna um, show you another example of a Facebook, uh, you, uh, us confusing Facebook algorithm. We have a business page, correct? So what do we do? We go out and tell all of our friends and our direct sales company to like my page. So what? after the third one, we just taught the algorithm that that's who we're looking for. So they start recommending them then. But that's not our ideal, custo our ideal customer on our business page. They're not going to do business with us. They're in business the same as us, okay? I'm gonna, and, and, and let me just use um, um, a different um, example. I am a coach. So because I use the word hashtag coaching, Facebook recommends every coach out there to me. But those coaches are not my ideal customers. They are looking for customers too. <laughs> We're looking for the same thing. They're not my ideal customers. So um, I have to be smart enough not to fall into that trap. Okay, I have to be smart enough to teach Facebook, no, 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 that's not who I'm looking for right here. So I do not go out and ask all of my direct sales friends to like my business page. It just confuses them. You know who sees your stuff when you post it on, it, on your business page? You said earlier, Linda, <laughs> you post stuff and very few people see it. You know who the few people who see it is? Your sister um, consultants in your direct sales business. That's who sees it because you just told the algorithm that's who you're looking for. And you'll know that because look at who likes your page, who comments on your page. And I mean, a lot of times somebody will ask me, well, look at my page and tell me what I'm doing wrong. I'll look at it and I'll say, wow, well, you know, Mary Kay loves you. I mean, <laughs> yes, <laughs> over you. Paparazzi <laughs> loves you. <laughs> I'm not putting any dollars in your pocket. No, they are not your, that's not who your tar target audience is. So again, we're going to have to teach the algorithm that that's not who you're looking for. So, um, so, so back to what I was saying about the algorithm. There are some things that you can do. There are a handful of things, maybe a half a dozen things that you can do to make to get more eyeballs or more views on your content. And there are about a half a dozen things that you can do that will really lower the number of people who see your content, okay? All right, so I'm not gonna give all of them. I'm gonna give you a couple, <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, you ready? To raise your content, you need to go live. That's the number one thing. So <laughs> there are others, remember I said there was about a half a dozen, but let me tell you this, going live, let's, let's say that um, I'm going to give you another, um, I'm going to give you another illustration. Okay, so when you come on Facebook and you start, um, um, start um, sending out friend requests, by the way, we teach people how to send out the friend request to get the people that you want, not the people that Facebook think you deserve. Okay, so that's one thing that we teach in, in, in my district. Um, all right, so, but when you come on, um, let me show you how the algorithm works. So you come on, let's say you come on and everything is even, okay, it's even, right? Um, you post something and Facebook might assign you a number. They say, okay, this person has a hundred friends. So if, I'm gonna show her post to, let's say 20 people. Now, she plays fair, I'll keep showing her post to 20 people. But if she does something I don't like, I'm going to show her post to 15 people. And if she does something else I don't like, 
five people, 10 people, then five people. And then you can do so much stuff that Facebook likes that nobody sees your post. You won't even know it. Because they used to put you in Facebook jail and they don't anymore. They do something called shadow banning. Shadow banning means that they ban your content. You put it up there. It's pretty. You can see it. Nobody's commenting on it. You wonder why? Because zero people saw it. Because you were disobedient to what Facebook wanted you to do. And so they punish you. Shadow banning is like sending you to the corner. You're in timeout. I actually was in a meeting where Mark himself said that on our business pages, it's an average of 5.004 of the people who are your friends see those pages. So that's kind of scary. <laughs> very, very low, very low. So in, thank you, that's very low, that's scarily low. But, and he's not going to raise it because he wants you to pay he wants you to pay for ads and he wants you to pay for boosting posts. So he's not going to let those people see this stuff for free when he can make money doing it. All right. So we have to be smart enough to know how to drive traffic to where we want them to be, or we're not going to get anything there. Okay. All right. So um, now I'm going to go back to my, to my illustration. So you can do some things that will let's say Mark says, do not send people away from my page, my, my, um, my, my, my platform. And you post a link that goes to your website. Bam, less people are going to see it. You sent them away from Facebook. He doesn't like that. Okay, let's say you post a link to your YouTube. Bam, it goes down again. Okay? <laughs> let's say you found an article out on um, Google, and it was a great article, very beneficial. You are excited about it. So you share it, ma'am, it goes down again. And pretty soon, nobody is seeing anything you do because you have just been driving that algorithm down, 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 or you've been driving a number of views down, down, down. But now let's say you start at 20 and you do some of the things that Mark likes, that Facebook likes. Like, let's say you go live and now that's it. Boom, it goes way up. That'll put you up higher than anything else. Now, let's say you just post. It does go up. Posting goes up a little bit. So you, if five point, point somebody, people is seeing it and you post on a regular baby, maybe 6.5, maybe even 10.5, you know, if the posts are really good and people um, engage with you, okay? So there are like about a half a dozen things that you can do to keep driving that algorithm up. So instead of um, 20 out of 100 see it, you know, maybe... Um, 30 and then 40 and so on. Now, Sharon and I had a, um, we're having a conversation today and she was saying that, um, that if she um, gets an average of less than a hundred views on her stories, that she, um, she does something to jumpstart the algorithm when the number of views on her stories jump, drop below a hundred. So who on here gets a hundred views on their story? Sharon and I do. <laughs> You get a you get a hundred views on your stories, Hurley. No, Linda. How? Okay. It, it depends on the story. Oh, okay. So you can get a hundred. I okay. have the last one I posted. I had two hundred fifty-seven. Excellent, 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 excellent. So there you go. So you know the possibilities, right? How many right. friends do you have, Linda, on your on your profile? Uh, over a thousand. I don't remember exactly. That's high for a thousand. Really good for a thousand. Like really good. Now, how many of that thousand are people who are in the same business as you? I want that you. I don't that's know. That's your homework. All yeah. of you, go into your Facebook friends list. This is your homework, ladies. Go into your Facebook friends list. Identify as many people as you can who are in the same company as you if you're in direct sales or in the same business as you if you are in another business like I'm in the coaching identify as many of those as you can and ask yourself is it necessary for you to be friends with these people for instance if you're a leader if they are part of your downline then yes it's it's okay for you to be friends with them okay even though it's not necessary if your Facebook page is public like it should be 
it must be public, okay? All right, so everybody can see what you post. No one can tag you, zero, okay? That's pro the tagging and all of that is probably gonna be for a different training, okay? But your post, um, um, anybody can see your post and um, there are some other things that we, we need to do with security. I'll go ahead and name some. No, um, nobody can tag you unless you approve it because what that means is, you know, somebody from another direct sales company can come post, make a post on their page, tag you, and put their content in front of all of your people. The audience that you spent all that time building, they just hijacked. So you need to, you must set your account so that you approve every tag. By the way, excessive tagging is one of those things that make your algorithm go bing. Okay. It's considered spam. Okay. So let's just say tagging is a, and I say excessive tagging. Tagging is supposed to be for you to say, hey, look, this is you in the picture. Hey, look, this was, was us. And instead, people are using it to drive, try to drive their business. Tagging people without their permission is, is, well, is considered spam. So if I put a post out and then I tag 99 people and just let a few of those people report you to Facebook and your account won't be shadow banned, it'll be cut off. That's spamming. Okay? Tagging was supposed to be put there as a fun way for you to share pictures between people who, who were connected. Like if, if the five of us was at a conference together and we came back and one of us posted it, we tagged the other ones. Okay, that's what it was for. And then people came online to decide, hey, I'm just going to hijack four more people's pages and I'm going to tag them. And then my stuff is going to end up on their page in front of their customers. I'm going to hijack, instead of building my own audience, I'm going to hijack the audience. And the algorithm is like, uh, 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 uh. okay, so, right? All right, so um, that's your homework. Get, let, let's, let's, um, let's get our, our friends list. First of all, let's get out the people who are not supposed to be there. And then in another um, training, we'll talk about who should be there, but it definitely should not be people who are in the same in the, um, 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 business as you or the same direct sales company as you, okay? All right. I have to say if it's over a hundred, let it go. <laughs> let them go. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we explain that, Sharon, so that they're they're very clear on what you're saying. Okay. Because as Lisa said, your if you have your page set up correctly, this is your your profile. We're not speaking of your business page. We're speaking of your profile. If you have it set up correctly, everybody can see it. Okay. In addition to that, people can follow you on your private profile. You have unlimited amount of people that can follow you, but on your profile, you only have 5,000 that can friend you. And if a couple of a thousand of those are Jaffa people, um, well, first of all, if you, first of all, if you have, if you have more than hundred people on there, that's Jaffa people, you're never going to get to, to 5,000. That's just out. I mean, you're just not going to have enough contact with people to be able to do that. So you want to be able to have that space for people who are going to actually come and take a look at your business, come and take a look at what you are offering. So you want, you want, that's your goal is to get to that 5,000 with people who are going to benefit your business. Correct. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. And so you know, it's a different training. Audience building is a different training. So once you 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 remove the people who shouldn't be there, um, putting the people um, on your friends list who should be there um, is called audience building. Okay, you're building your audience. It's the way to prospect online. You know, the old way of 
hitting the streets and passing out business cards and uh, so on. And um, think about it like this. Um, if you had a brick and mortar store and you, 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 you went and you picked out the, the perfect spot on Main Street, it's on the corner, it's perfect, um, you know, lots of traffic going by, you're excited about it, you open up your, you go there, you get your inventory, you open up your store, and then you put a sign in the window that says now open, you put a little, little, um, you know, sign on the sidewalk that, that, that attract people, but it's your grand opening. So what do you do? You step outside the door and you say, hey, come in and take a look. You might, be, you know, if you sell perfume, you know how to spray people. If you got food, you're handing out samples. You're saying, come in here and take a look. Now, what you're saying is, come in and take a look. Now, some people are going to come in and look and then go right back out. They might not buy anything, but they might say, think to themselves, I'm not, I like it. This is a cool place. I'm going to come back later, right? Some people come in, they look and they say, you know what? There's nothing in there that I'm really interested in, but thank you for inviting me in. And they keep on back out the door. And then, of course, now let's say that somebody is walking down the street and, you know, you've got families in there browsing, but somebody walked down the street questionably dressed, just, just, just a hot, raggedy, a hot mess. And you got to, and, and I mean, don't even have clothes on, just streaking. Are you going to say, hey, come in here and see, come in here with these families and see? No. So on Facebook, we have the same thing. There are some people we're not going to say, come and take a look because we already took a look at them. They are not our target audience. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but, um, so, so what we have to do is we have to learn how to say, come take a look at what I've got online. And that's what we teach. How to say, come on, come on, take a look. Come on, come on, come, 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 welcome. You know, that kind of thing. That's what we do. That's what you do when you audience feel. You, you invite people to come by and take a look. Okay, all right? So, all right, so now, now that we've, um, did I miss anything, Sharon, do you think? <laughs> Um, um, let's see, I think I covered what we were going to cover in this one, <laughs> which is about how Facebook algorithm works. Okay. Oh, just so you ladies know, I, I am Sharon Davis and I am Lisa's co-host. She and I have worked together for many, many years and developed a lot of stuff together. <laughs> Absolutely. A lot of stuff online together. Yes, yes. So, um, yeah, we've been doing this for many, many years, and um, we, 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 we took a lot of classes together. We did a lot of masterminds together. We did a lot of coach, um, hired the same coaches. Um, sometimes I would say, I'm going to take this class, and she would say, okay, cool, I'll take this one. We'll come back and compare notes. And so um, the reason why we know what we're doing is because we've been at it for a long time. Didn't start last year. I promise you it did not start last year. We've been at this for a long time. If you go out and, and scroll my my um my um my 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 timeline, you'll see. And I will confess, a lot of this stuff we learned from trial and error. And we did make some errors. For instance, my first Facebook page was shut down totally. I cannot access it. I had built it for years. And then I messed with that algorithm probably a uh, time or two too many. And I came online, uh, what, August, October the 1st, I guess, two, uh, what, three years ago now? I came online October the 1st. Five, that's about five years ago. Was it five? Yeah, it was right after we started Coast to Coast. It sure was. So uh, this October will be five years. I came online and I tried to log in and it was like, mm -mm, no, not, my profile was locked out and my, my, my business page was locked out. And I cried for like 24 hours and then I got up the next day mad and I started a new page. So my original profile was Arlita Lisa Washington. Now I had to do A dash Lisa Washington. My original um, business page was Jaffa Lady Lisa. Now my business page, but I have several, but it's Beauty Boss Lisa, Beauty Boss Nation. So um, I learned a few things. And um, one of the things I learned was I don't care what company, if you're in direct sales, I don't care what company you're in, their name should not be on your business page, okay? That's another thing about the algorithm. Their name should not be on your business page. You shouldn't say, you know, uh, Joanne Sprouse 
independent blah, blah, blah consultant. It should never say that. So I got into a lot, a lot of trouble when I first started teaching that. But now the rest of the nation has caught up now. You brand yourself, okay? So five years ago, when I had to start over, I didn't start over with Jeffrey Lady Lisa. I started over with Beauty Boss Lisa, okay? I'm gonna brand myself and that's, and we teach everybody that we come in contact with to do the same thing. So, um, you know, we'll cover branding in another um, training. But for right now, I'm gonna stop. We have about five minutes and I'm gonna see if anybody has any questions or did you hear something that you want me to repeat or to clear up or clarify? I always wondered about having um, a bunch of consultants as friends. And I wondered why everybody did that because um, cause my thought was if we're all connected, I mean, truly, you know, some of them are friends, no doubt, but if you're connected to so many and they're posting stuff, are my people seeing all their posts on my, I guess that's where I was getting kind of jacked up. Like, I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, but now you know the, the 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 business reason why it's not a good idea, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, that's good. Any other um, thoughts or uh, uh, questions? Joanne, um, I apologize. This is being recorded, so you'll be able to go back and get the rest of it, okay? Oh, good. And I apologize. I came in late, but I just now got your message. It's okay. It's okay. You're one of the first ones to say, hey, where are you? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to um, have Sharon to, um, to stop the recording and then um, we'll do a little closing and then this will be the end of our first training. Okay. Sharon. Thank you. Um, don't go anywhere yet. We're not going yet. We're just going to stop recording first, okay?